I was currently in a luxurious suite. I got changed into a comfortable blue tank top with my off-white sweatpants. Now, I was sitting on the couch, surfing through some social media platforms. Ace and I were everywhere. Our wedding was a big success. There were barely any signs of Simon Rainstorm. Seems like people even forgot his existence, which was good for our image. Are you planning to sleep before we start our long drive at 4? Ace's voice brought me out of my trance. I looked at the time on my phone. It was already 1 in the morning. We had only 3 hours left. I don't think I will sleep now. I glanced at Ace, who freshened up as well. I said, I can sleep in the car, so you are going to stay awake too, he stated as if he was informing himself. Then we should celebrate our wedding. I arched an eyebrow, keeping my phone on my lap. How, maybe with a drink? I frowned. Where will we find a drink now? You know, I don't like random ones. Ace pursed his lips. Well, I think today is your lucky day, Mrs. Valentino. With that, he walked in the opposite direction and took out a bottle. As soon as he walked towards me, I saw that he was holding Dom Perignon Rose Gold Champagne. Immediately, a gasp escaped my lips. How do you have this here? I asked, bewildered. I scooted over and he sat next to me. He said, I wanted to enjoy drinking this yesterday but I had some work and forgot about it. Who knew we were meant to drink this together? I chuckled and took the two glasses from the coffee table in front of me. Ace opened the bottle and started pouring the champagne. Last I remember, you have zero alcohol tolerance, Ava. Ace mumbled while I took my glass. I rolled my eyes. At least I won't be the one driving for 8 hours, but I want to drink too. I don't want to be staring as you finish my champagne all by yourself, he protested. Then what do you suggest? I raised an eyebrow. One swig won't hurt, you know the laws, Ace, and trust me, I don't want to die on my wedding night, I reasoned. Fine then, I won't drive, we will think of something else, but right now I want the drink, Ace declared and picked up his glass. I laughed at his greediness and clicked my glass with his. To our unexpected wedding, to our unexpected wedding, he repeated after me. Both of us started drinking. I was laughing like a madwoman. Everything around me seemed so funny looking including Ace's face. No, he couldn't be funny looking. He was supposed to be handsome looking. But when I looked at his confused face once again, I burst into laughter. Arthur, are you okay? Ace asked me. For a moment, his face held seriousness. But it didn't last long as the two of us started laughing together. Of course, I am okay, I replied in between my laughs. I was born to be okay in this world. No one is born to be okay, he said with his adorable laugh that showed his dimples. Everyone has to suffer to stay alive. How can you say you are okay, but you ask me whether I was okay or not? And since childhood, I've been taught that if someone asked you that, you were supposed to always reply in the positive I pointed out. Ace stopped laughing and looked at me intently. You don't have to lie to me, Oliver. But what if the situation turns different and I get scared to confess any truth in the future? I asked worriedly. Ace brushed his cold thumb over my soft cheeks. He took a deep breath and started speaking in the future. Even if the situation doesn't support you, you can always count on me, Ava. I will support you with everything as long as you promise to never lie to me about anything. I nodded my head and grabbed his hands firmly. I promise to always tell you the truth, Ace. He smiled warmly at me, which gave me the comfort I needed. I promise to always support you, Mrs. Valentino. I rolled my eyes. Even though you've repeated this numerous times, why am I still not habituated with the title Mrs. Valentino? I don't know, he mumbled. Maybe this is why I am calling you this continuously. I furrowed my brows in confusion. What's the reason for you to call me this repeatedly? I didn't understand. Maybe I still can't believe you are my wife. With that, he burst into laughter again, along with me. So you're telling me that you are calling me Mrs. Valentino because you're feeling it all surreal. 
When he nodded his head, I further added, that won't still change the fact I'm really your wife now, whether you believe it or not. I know, he uttered and gulped another glass of drink at one go while I was pouring more in my glass. Oga, did you know that I felt different with you? Different, yes, and I still do. I asked curiously, what kind of different feeling? I don't know. It's just that you are different from the others in front of my eyes, he explained to me. If other people are princes and princesses, then you are the crown. You always shine in front of my eyes. I was confused by his words. At this point, nothing made sense. I didn't even know what I was talking about, yet I asked, so you are saying, if you get stuck in a crowd, your eyes will look for me at first, right? He nodded his head repeatedly. Why? I asked him. Because you're the only person I feel comfortable with, he responded without any hesitation. A gasp escaped my lips. Ace, maybe your eyes are in love with me. Why do you think so? He asked, equally confused as me. Because your eyes would only look for me in the crowd, I pointed out. You are right, this might be the reason, he uttered and glanced at me. Then he looked at my lips. My eyes are in love with your lips too, why? I inquired. Is it because of the lip gloss I applied? That strawberry flavored, which I especially had imported from I forgot the country's name. Ace cupped my face, pulling me closer to him. He licked his lips which really made me horny. He asked me, do you mind if I before he could complete his sentence, I placed my lips over his.